Welcome back to The Sin of a Wife. I am your girl, Shauna Karine. Thank you so much for tuning in to another rendition, another episode of The Sin of a Wife. I really appreciate it, honey child. Um, <laughs> I'm being silly. But no, seriously, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's talk a little bit about The Sin of a Wife, what it's all about. So, SIN is an acronym and it stands for Secret Consecration for an Esther's Noble Transformation, right? So, we're allowing God to consecrate us so that he can change us, transform us, so that he can mold us into that woman that he has desired for us to be. The repronged mission of the sin of a wife. So, first and foremost, is to help you to become the wife that God desires for you to be, honey. Listen, when God gave me that revelation of, I want to transform you and other women around this world, my daughters, into the wife I want them to be, honey, that's deep. Let that marinate. Put it on a piece of bread. Let it marinate. But no, seriously, to help you to become the wife that God wants you to be, that's the first prong. The second prong of the mission of the sin of a wife is to help you to become the wife that you want to be, right? And then last but certainly not least, to help you to become the wife that your husband deserves. Yes, 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 and that he needs. So welcome you all. We are knee deep into a series that is heavy, that is like really, I pray that is breaking strongholds. I pray that you are getting breakthrough, that you're getting deliverance, that you are starting to get the deliverance that you need and the revelation. Because what we're talking about is what if you feel like because of generational curses or because of iniquities that have been passed down through your bloodline, or because of just, you know, bad experiences with your family, excuse me, as it pertains to marriages, as it pertains to relationships, like what if you feel like there's no hope for me? So I don't even know why I'm tuning in to this little pretty girl talking about wanting to be married. Well, this is why, because God has set me as his vessel in your pathway to let you know that there is nothing. The Bible says that he withholds no good thing from them who love the Lord and who are the called according to whose? His purpose. So come on in, girl. Do not disconnect from this video. Ma'am, woman, beautiful beautiful daughter of the Lord. Tonight, today, whenever you're watching, whenever you're tuning in this morning, wherever you're tuning in from around the world, come on in, buckle up, and let's talk about tonight what we want to discuss as it pertains to allowing God. See, the last time, um, last week, we talked about, I ended on allowing God to uncover, right? But trusting and believing that he's not going to leave us uncovered. And that was very heavy. When I heard God say it, I said, well, God, I, I got I to gotta end this video and come back next week. So welcome back. But allowing God to uncover the layers that you have, the layers that may actually have been passed down, right? Those curses, those generational curses, those iniquities. And, and let me differentiate really quickly between a sin and an iniquity. So we know that a sin is anything that separates us from God. Sins can be sins of commission, omission. Sins can be covert, overt, right? Sin can be something that you intentionally do, that you don't intentionally do. Anything that separates you from God um, is, is technically considered a sin, right? We know that. Now, an iniquity, on the other hand, is something that is a deep-rooted, it goes beyond the sinful nature of man. Iniquity is something that is passed down. Iniquity is like a, um, iniquity 
it's like the disease and sin is like the side effect or the way that it manifests itself. So all diseases manifest themselves differently through the body. So iniquity is the disease, that thing that has been passed down from generation to generation or from, you know, situation to situation. That's an iniquity. So now what I was saying is that we have to allow for God to uncover. What does that mean? That means that we go into our prayer closet. That means that we go into the face of the Lord and we say, you know what, gosh, God, excuse me. We say, we know what, God, I am going to allow for you to uncover. I'm going to allow for you. I give you permission to show me me. Mm -hmm. I give you permission to unearth. Those things that I may have buried, right? I've buried below surfaces. Maybe I've buried it below my great career. You know, maybe there was a layer I put over something that I I haven't wanted to deal with. Or I don't even know that there that is there for me to need um that it's a need for me to deal with it, right? Or, you know, maybe I buried it below makeup. Maybe I buried it below food. Maybe I buried it below relationships, right? So I find myself going from relationship to relationship to relationship because really I'm trying to hide. I'm trying to cover up and keep covered um, some issues that I just, I don't want to deal with it, right? Now, trigger alert alert. That could be, it, it. that could look so many different ways. It could look if you were raped, if you were molested, if you were abused, if you were neglected, right? If you, if you had your heart broken, if you experienced the loss of one of your parents at a very early age, um, it could look so many different ways. If you were bullied as a child and it calls for you to have, you know, um, deep rooted issues with who you are. Let me just say that regardless as to what layer it could be that you are loved, that you are beautiful and that you were created to shine that you were created to walk in your purpose, that you were created to have impact. Not only, let's not for right now think about anybody else, right? Because in, in this world, sometimes we're taught that being selfish, that if you put you first, that you're that selfishness is bad. Selfishness is not always a bad thing. It's not always a bad thing to think about you because how can you help anyone else if you haven't first helped yourself? And I'm, I'm guilty of this. I'm one of the first people to tell you that when you are so used to not putting you first, it becomes second nature to put somebody else first. It becomes second nature to think that someone else's purpose, someone else's vision, someone else's goals hmm, are more important than your own. But I'm here to tell you that that's not the case. And that as you allow for God to uncover, and how you may say, Shonika, I want I want to I want to allow him to uncover. I want to allow for him to dig deep. How do I even have that conversation? What does that look like? What, how do I say that? This is what you say. Simply you say, God, I'm tired of thinking that I know all things. And if you've already had that conversation, great. You can start at step two. Step two is saying. Can you please show me every area of my life that's not like you? Please show me every 
piece of my parts of my body, of my mind, of my soul, of even my spirit, of my consciousness, of my subconsciousness, of my thinking, of my doing that I need to work on that doesn't exemplify you, right? Then what you, that you have that conversation and you daily go to your word. And I have, whew, I have so many different Bibles, so many um, ones I have, you know, um, Amplified, I have Christian Standard Bible, I have Tree of Life Version, I have New International Version, I have King James Version, um, and there are different places. I got a couple in here in my office, I have a couple in my bedroom, um, I, I just have Bibles, right? I have Bible app on my phone, and the reason why I think it's so important to keep the Word of God around you is because it's the Word of God that God uses to as a as one way to uncover the layers in you. I used to not understand that. I used to think like how what do you mean like how can the word of God uncover layers within me? Well, here's how. Give you a prime example. Everyone knows Psalms 23. Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We can stop right there right? Perhaps a layer that you've allowed either willingly or, or knowingly, or I should say not willingly, but knowingly or unknowingly is you may say, hmm, well, wait a minute. I haven't allowed for the Lord to be my shepherd. I've been being my own shepherd. I've been trying to make sure that Shonika has all that Shonika needs. So whether that means that I step on other people, whether that means that I, you know, ignore my health and my fitness, whether that means that I do things that I'd rather not do, that I'm always self-sacrificing because I'm always trying to make sure that I provide for myself. Then as you read that scripture and you really begin to chew on it and you really begin to dissect what it means to understand that the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Oh, wait a minute, God. I wasn't created to be my own shepherd. I wasn't created to be the one that makes sure that I have what I need. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that we don't do our part, right? I'm not saying that we don't work, that we don't, you know, create, you know, God gives us a business idea that we don't act on that, that we don't do our part. Faith with our words is dead. But I am saying that we lean into the grace of God. We lean into the power of God. We understand that he's the source. So as he uncovers those different aspects of ourselves, of who we are, then what happens is we can begin to allow him to heal. We can begin to allow him to transform. We can begin to allow for him to make those necessary changes. And it could be something drastic that he has to do, but it could also be something very, very slight, just a, a, a twink, you know, a twink. That's not a word. Just a tweak is what I was trying to say, mm -hmm. but just a small tweak as opposed to, you know, sometimes we are afraid to give it to God because we feel like, God, if I give it to you, look how, like, how much work are you going to have to do with me? Like, oh my gosh, you know, like, but we have to turn it over to him and trust that he won't leave us uncovered. Okay, guys, I, I'm realizing I'm going to have to do one more episode, one more part, part four. So my time is up here. I never want to keep you all, you know, long. And I don't want to, to make you all feel like I'm trying to take it for your whole day. So I'm going to end it here, but come back. I'm going to do part four next week um, of just these allowing God to uncover the layers and still leave us covered. But again, I'm Shonaka Renee. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. She's a center. Subscribe. She's the same.